Welcome to Poughkeepsie Farm Project, where we grow over 200,000 pounds of produce a year for our community. Here at PFP, we also like to celebrate how to cook healthy local fruits and veggies. Today, we're talking about one of our favorite vegetables here on the farm, kale. Sonia Joy is going to start us off with a breathing exercise today. Let's start by taking a deep belly breath together. This is a calming thing to practice. So lift your arms as you inhale, filling a giant bubble with your breath. And imagine you're filling, filling, filling all the way to the top until pop, you exhale. Breathing out of your mouth on the way down. Okay, let's do it a couple more times. Inhale, fill up your bubble. Breathe deeply through your nose. Go up, 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 all the way to the top when pop, exhale. Let the air go out of your mouth. Empty your belly. One more time. Deep breath in. Fill it up, up, up. All the way up until pop, exhale. Whew. I feel more relaxed. <laughs> I hope you do too. Now Catherine is going to talk to us about some of our favorite multicultural foods. Can you name any foods that you eat that were originally from the continent of Africa? Pause here to think about it. Some of my favorite foods that came from Africa are watermelon, black-eyed peas, rice, peanuts, collard greens, and yams. Now Lala is going to join us with the word of the day. The word of the day is multicultural. Multicultural means relating to or including many different cultures. Culture is all the beliefs and traditions and art of groups of people in different places in different times. The music you listen to, the clothes you wear, the shelter you live in are all examples of your community's culture. For example, here in Poughkeepsie, we have people from different parts of the world, from Mexico, from China, from Jordan, from Jamaica, from Colombia, even Senegal. India, and many other places. This means that here in Poughkeepsie, we're a multicultural city. Catherine's gonna teach us about multicultural recipes today. The veggie of the day is kale. We love kale so much that it is our November harvest of the month. Kale is usually grown for the leaf of the plant. It grows on the farm all season long, but prefers cool weather in the spring and fall. Here's some adult kale growing on the farm. The farmers harvest the individual leaves for our community to eat. There are other ways to grow and eat kale too. You can eat kale as a microgreen or when the plant is a baby. You can even eat kale's flowers which grow when the plant is making its seeds. Let's learn some more about kale. Kale was cultivated all the way back in ancient Greece. Europeans grew multiple different varieties of kale. The Italians had bumpy dinosaur kale. Scottish people grew a variety that's called curly kale, and the Russians grew kale that could survive under the snow. Kale soon spread to Asia as well, and eventually here to America, where farmers invented many new varieties. Our recipe today is multicultural because it celebrates a dish from West Africa, and it includes a food that is usually found in farms in cooler places around the world, kale. Sonia Joy is going to share with you about the people who created the recipe that features kale. Hey, this is Sonia Joy here, coming to you from the kale in the education garden. Let's pretend for a moment that you are a farmer from Ghana. Ghana is a country on the coast of West Africa. You grow lots of vegetables on your farm in Ghana, but there is one vegetable that is very special. It helps you grow other vegetables, like kale, which need lots of nourishment in the soil. Can you guess which vegetable makes the soil healthier? It's beans. Beans are a very helpful plant to grow in your garden or on a farm. They take nitrogen from the air and they put it into the soil through their roots. Then other plants like kale can use that nitrogen to grow big and strong. Basically, beans are other vegetable superheroes. A very popular character in Ghanaian children's stories is Anansi the trickster spider who thinks very highly of himself and gets into a lot of trouble. People tell stories about Anansi to learn what not to do. There's one story in particular that I think is very special. It's called
called Anansi and the Pot of Beans. This story is all about what happens to Anansi when he decides to leave his work on the farm and sneak into Grandma Spider's kitchen for a taste of her famous beans. Even after she told him not to. Can you imagine what happens to Anansi? If you want to find out, check out this fun book called Anansi and the Pot of Beans by Bobby Norfolk. You can find a link below this video to listen to a reading of the book on YouTube. Next, Catherine has a fun activity for you to try. So, the person who drew the pictures in your favorite book, what are they called? That's right, they're the illustrator of the book. Illustrators can draw in service of science. They can draw plants, the human body, even outer space. Now, we're going to illustrate three different types of kale. Curly kale, dinosaur kale, and red Russian kale. Take out a paper and pencil and then pause over the images that come up next. Make sure you pay close attention to things like the stem, the veins of the plants, and the shape of the leaves. Take your time and notice all the similarities and differences in the different types of kale. When you're done with your illustration, let's go over to Katana for a nature moment in the garden. Before we leave the farm today, it's time for our nature moment. Let's play a game of I Spy. What is one thing you can see or happening around me on the farm right now? Do you hear or see a bird, bug, or a plant? How about the sky or the soil? I am noticing the bees in the broccoli flowers, buzzing and pollinating all around. There's a delicious tomato and rice dish from West Africa called jollof rice. You can even add more veggies to it, like kale. It's tasty and easy to make. Children will need an adult to help make this tasty recipe. Cook along with Sonia Joy in English or Lala in Spanish by clicking the links below. The recipe's in the video. Thanks for joining us here at Poughkeepsie Farm Project. If you liked this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the thumbs up. Until next time, take care of yourselves, your plants, and each other. Bye now.